Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Wednesday, March the 6th, 2024. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do so. Hit the thumbs up button and also the bell notification so you continue to get the new videos as they are released. Please share this this stuff and these videos with as many people as you can so we can keep waking people up as to what is happening. A couple of quick stories before I get on to my main topic today, which is the unbelievable report that came out regarding the woefully underfunded Medicare and Social Security. It's worse than I think anybody could possibly imagine, and this affects all of us. Initially, two quick stories I want to address. One is the Red Sea situation, the shipping problem with the Houthis, the Iranian-backed Houthis have been attacking the shipping vessels and the cargo vessels going through the Red Sea. And this has caused a snarl of big proportion. So another news article today comes out from The Hedge. This is attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea continue to escalate and risk sparking a regional conflict. As President Biden's Operation Prosperity Guardian to shield ships from Iran-backed Houthi attacks has miserably failed. It says the latest incident involves a commodity ship hit by at least one anti-ship ballistic missile in the Gulf of Aden, close to the Bab al-Manab Strait, marking the first fatality, it says, of crew members of the multi-month Red Sea crisis. Two killed and six injured in a Houthi missile strikes on the MV True Confidence, a Liberian-owned vessel in the Red Sea today, per two U.S. officials. And it says that the coalition warships have responded and are assessing the situation, including an American-guided missile cruiser. Look, we all have to keep watch on this. These always start out as smaller conflicts, and they can easily escalate into something much larger. In this case, a worst case scenario would be, you know, Iran, Iran pitted against the United States directly in a conflict to the extent that it's not already unfolding and maybe even something larger than that. Not to mention how this will impact or continue to impact the availability of goods and supplies being shipped through the Red Sea. And it's a substantial amount of goods and merchandise, fuel, things like that. Next article came out this afternoon, again from The Hedge. We've all been watching this New York Community Bank collapse. I mean collapse. Their stock is down 40% in the last month or so, month and a half. All the news about that bank has been dire. It's all been, look at their balance sheets are so bad. They have so many skeletons in the closet. They have so many toxic assets that they're holding, namely uh, commercial real estate, underperforming or non-performing loans that were had to be addressed. And this morning, the news was even more dire. The stock had fallen below $2, and all of a sudden, miraculously, a group appears to infuse a billion dollars into NYCB, uh, none other than former Secretary, U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin, is part of or major part of the group that is bailing out New York Community Bank. And the article says, having seen shares collapse over 40% before being halted for news pending today, trading was halted on the stock exchange. It says Bloomberg reports that New York Community Bank Corp plans to announce an equity investment of more than a billion dollars led by Stephen Mnuchin's Liberty Strategic Capital, Comma Hudson Bay Capital and Reverence Capital Partners, according to a spokesperson for the bank. Liberty will invest $450 million, Hudson Bay $250 million, and Reverence $200 million as part of the transaction. And it says that Stephen Mnuchin is also now going to be given a seat on the board, and the number of board, uh, number, the size of the board is going to be reduced. He made a couple comments. Secretary, former Secretary. Mnuchin. He says, quote, in evaluating this investment, we were mindful of the bank's credit risk profile. With the over $1 billion of capital invested in the bank, we believe we now have sufficient capital should reserves need to be increased in the future to be consistent with or above the coverage ratios of NYCB's 
large bank peers. He goes on to state, we decided to make this investment because we believe Sandro, comma, alongside new management has taken the appropriate actions to stabilize the company and to position NYCB to, be, to become, listen to this, a best in class $100 billion national bank with a diversified and de-risked business model that supports long-term profitability. We are confident, Mr. Mnuchin says, that NYCB is poised to generate sustainable shareholder value. We don't know how much of a haircut the shareholders were, were, will have to take, how much the stock was diluted, but it will probably be substantial. This doesn't smell right to me. Again, uh, you know, I always look at things, unfortunately, the glass is always half empty, but it just doesn't smell right. What is this all about? Something else is going on here. Uh, is has the U.S. government and the Fed decided to create another uh, too big to fail bank with NYCB? Is this being just set up for another one of the large banks to come in and swallow it up at some kind of uh, a um, a markup or a premium and, and and cutting loose all of the toxic assets for the shareholders to absorb? I don't know what this is about. I bet there's more to come on this. I don't believe this story is over. But from my perspective, it doesn't send a signal of strength. Maybe it was just a last ditch effort saying, look, it, if someone doesn't do something here, we're going to have another wave of banks and bank failures following. I don't know what to, to, to how I assess this. I don't know what my takeaway is, but it just doesn't feel right that you have these big players coming in with that much money into a bank that was literally on the doorstep of bankruptcy. We'll keep monitoring that situation. The next story, as the largest one I wanted to share today, I thought was very important. And there's a lot of the story I'm going to basically read because it's statistics and it's important for all of us to hear this. If you are 50 years or early 50s or younger, and you're watching this, this video, please listen to this story. It will impact you. If you're receiving Medicare and Social Security benefits now, but you just started receiving them, this may very well impact you as well. Here's the story. It says, Doomsday Clock is ticking. Again, another Zero Hedge story today. U.S. unfunded Social Security and Medicare liability hits 1753 trillion dollars and yes i said t i said trillion with a t it says 173 trillion dollars is the most important financial number in the world the new financial report of the united states government february 2024 estimates that the financial position of social security and medicare are underfunded by that much money treasury secretary janet yellen signed the report the amount, it says, is unfathomable. Here are two examples for context. The gross domestic product of every country on planet Earth was only $104.5 trillion last year. And $175.3 trillion is nearly as much as our federal government has spent on everything since the Constitution was written in 1787, even adjusted for inflation says the federal government, excuse me, so Medicare, it says, is forecasted to start cutting benefits in just seven years. Social Security's trust funds start running out of money in 10 years. The funds are projected for depletion by 2041. So that's 17 years from now by my, by my calculation. So again, if you are 50 or younger, good luck having a situation where you're going to be able to receive Social Security or Medicare. You're going to be paying into it for the next 17 years, but I'd be very surprised if this is accurate if you receive any benefits, uh, at the, any, anything at the end. So what does that mean? It means if you are in, if you're 50, early 50s or younger, you better start planning. You better start planning to be able to provide private health care insurance and, and, and sources of retirement revenues for you and your family when you get to retirement age, or you're going to simply not be able to retire. It says, in 2013, then U.S. Senator, the late 
Dr. Tom Coburn warned that Congress was drunk on spending. Coburn highlighted the federal unfunded liabilities, which then were $128 trillion. Today, just 10 years later, the financial picture is considerably worse, up nearly $50 trillion, or 39%. Because of the size of this deficit, it says, there's no clear path toward obtaining the funding needed. That means radical changes could be coming to two of the nation's most fundamental services. The Treasury estimates estimates that the U.S. will spend $215.7 trillion in the next 75 years to give Social Security and Medicare payouts to beneficiaries. In that period, it says, collections mostly through payroll taxes, which we all pay, are estimated at only $137.4 trillion. So that's a $78.3 trillion funding gap. It says, according to the Yellow Report, It can only be generated through increased borrowing, meaning printing more money, comma, higher taxes, comma, reduced benefits, or some combination. Is any of those things good? Increased borrowing, higher taxes, or reduced benefits. Those are all bad, bad, bad scenarios and bad outcomes. This is, for example, more than half of the unfunded liability comes from Part B of Medicare which covers basic health care services like doctor's visits and equipment such as wheelchairs. It says it gets even worse. The Yellen Report honestly tells us that the 75-year projection underestimates just how much extra cash is needed because that period does not include the years when most Social Security and Medicare dollars will be paid out. So... Treasury estimates that current participants will use $105.4 trillion more for Medicare and Social Security than than those same people pay into the program through their taxes. So here are the unfunded liabilities broken out by program. Listen to this. Medicare Part A, which is covered uh, covers hospital visits, is projected to have a $15.1 trillion surplus. But Medicare Part B is the largest liability with an unfunded $99.5 trillion. Medicare Part D for prescription drugs will be unfunded by or underfunded by $22.1 trillion. And Social Security needs an additional $68.8 trillion. Talks about how the leadership under Reagan back in the 80s, that he had seen this, uh, this problem coming down the road. And they had introduced and uh, passed the Social Security Reform Act of 1983, which made comprehensive changes in coverage, financing, and benefit structure. But it says the leadership that we saw in the 1980s simply has never returned. And the crisis has grown. Medicare spent 446 billion dollars more than it collected and social security was upside down 88.8 billion dollars last year alone in 2023 so again um you know we're talking about some of us if we're not at the retirement age yet we're all talking about our children and our grandchildren and what kind of a uh, system will be there for them it doesn't sound like to be much of a system at all. So we all should be paying attention to this. Again, what's the solution? I know these, some of these problems we lay out and talk about on this show are, appear insurmountable. You know, and I don't know, obviously, the solution, but I wanted to get this information out to you because it, what, what can we do at a personal level? We can't control what the government's going to do how they're going to increase the taxes or the, how they're going to reduce the benefits. But we can control the best that we can But shoring up. It always comes back to shoring up our private situation. It's money on hand. It's not just anymore you're going to get a check and, and, and get a, uh, you know, a, a fake gold watch and, and sail off into the sunset. You're not going to get that check many, many more years down the road. No one is. No one's going to go be able to, to have their Medicare benefits to pay for their prescriptions and for their medical services and for their doctor's visits. So people, please think about this 
it comes down to what are you doing now? Do not rest on your laurels. Do everything you can to pay off debt and to increase your asset base, your money and the, and the, and the ability you have when you do get to that age, if you want to slow down and work and not work until you pass away, that you have the ability to draw from some of those monies you've set aside. And whether it's for mandatory things like health care or whether it's just for things you might want to do when you're able to retire, go on vacation and the like. It's quality of life. Think about it now. 17 years will come around very, very quickly. We're at 15 minutes today. Hope you enjoyed the content. I'll be leaving here in a little while to go get my workout today. It's a one-hour shoulder workout. I hope all of you will take the opportunity today just for a few minutes, whether it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Do some walking. Get some steps in. Um, do a little bit of strength training, push-ups, sit-ups, you know, body weight squats, anything like that. Wherever you are, you don't need a fancy gym to have these things or to have these things excuse me, to complete these things. They're at your disposal At your disposal by simply getting out of your desk chair and walking and doing some things wherever you're at. Please consider the diet super important. That is more crucial than the workouts. I'll leave it there today. Hopefully I'll be able to touch base tomorrow. I believe my schedule will permit. Have a great evening. Bye.